I'm good. Tonight, Sydney hijacked, roads gridlocked, buses packed, commuters, the victims of a citywide train shutdown with no guarantee they'll be running tomorrow. Severe storms are tonight rolling across Sydney, heavy flooding in Penrith. The widow of Walker learns her fate, decades in jail, for poisoning the man who loved her. A conversation the world's been waiting for. Talks between Joe Biden and Vladimir Putin. Distance dissolved in seconds at Sydney International Airport. And the young Parramatta star has had his season ended by his girlfriend's brother. This is Nine News with Peter Overton. Good evening. Sydney's rail network has been paralysed and it choked the entire city in the biggest disruption seen in decades. A snap decision in the middle of the night left thousands with no option but to opt for crowded buses and congested roads, many simply unable to get to work and school. Commuters caught in the middle of an industrial dispute between the rail, tram and bus union and the state government. And tonight, there's no end in sight. State politics reporter Liz Daniels begins our coverage. Monday morning madness gripping Sydney. Stations barricaded, platforms abandoned, passengers stranded. Every train on every line across the city cancelled without notice. Due to industrial action today, there is no train driving on the network. Commuters waking to comatose trains after a snap overnight shutdown forced instead to cram onto buses, but when half a million people are left waiting at the Opal Gates, they can't be moved quickly. There's no warnings of chaos here. The frustration palpable at Parramatta. I've got to get to Hornsby. There's no way to get there for my normal shift, but uh, so far I've been on the 7-Eleven and I have to get to onto the uh, 600 bus. This can take two hours approximately. At Chatswood, the queues snaked the length of the block. By mid-morning, the roads were gridlocked. Maximum chaos inflicted on a day universities went back to class and the city was told to return to the office. A nightmare. I just had to catch four buses. Just... With trains on standby, a platform full of drivers were left twiddling their thumbs at Central. We signed on for work as normal and were told that there were no trains running today, so we'd sit around and do nothing. If they give me a train, I'll drive it right now. I've got no issues with that at all. Caught in the middle of a political power play 12 months out from a state election. This is not a strike. We are not on strike. What we've seen today is nothing short of industrial bastardry. From the Transport Minister to the Premier, all fingers were pointed at the union. This is a coordinated attack by the Labor Party and the union movement. Even the Prime Minister chimed in. The unions decided to pull on a strike at 2am this morning, throwing... Sydney siders into complete chaos. While train drivers are in a rolling industrial battle, they turned up for work. It was the government who decided not to run services, but struggled to explain why. They had no alternative in terms of safety. On Saturday afternoon, the union and the government agreed to limited industrial action, which wouldn't disrupt passengers. But late last night, the government called it into question and dragged the union back to the Fair Work Commission. By 1am, the CEO of Sydney Trains shut down the entire rail network. We would risk uh, trains being stranded across the network, trains being delayed for hours and hours, and customers being stranded across the network. The government has just done the most low and dastardly thing that you could ever imagine a government doing. They've locked out their workforce and they've inconvenienced the people in New South Wales just because it was going to be a little bit difficult. A tit for tat playing out for hours today as workers, nurses, students, hundreds of thousands of people were left trying to figure out how to get home. We will work into the evening if that's required to look at what we can do to get trains running again tomorrow across Sydney. All right, our state political reporter Liz Daniels joins me. Liz, the question is, will the trains be running again tomorrow? Well, Pete, we simply don't know yet, and computers are being told to keep refreshing the Transport for New South Wales website to see if an answer pops up. We're now in the 18th hour of this stoppage, and the unions are actively calling on the government to allow them to drive the trains tomorrow. But it's a matter of whether or not 
the government will take up that offer. Pete, we are now caught in a waiting game to see who blinks first. OK, Liz, we'll leave you there. Let's go to Zara James, who joins me tonight from the Anzac Bridge. Zara, how's the traffic? <laughs> The traffic is really starting to build here on the Anzac Bridge and on many other major roads out of Sydney as people head home. After a day of replacement buses, driving to work and some people simply saying it's all too hard. Commuters now have to reverse their trips this evening and face the same chaos again tonight. As for tomorrow morning, there's still no telling what exactly will happen, but added to it all tonight, there's now a storm warning in place for Sydney, Pete. Dawn broke on a confused city. Commuters caught off guard, many learning their train service was abandoned after they'd left home. There's nothing on that I can find on any internet site to say they're on strike. I'll be very late for work. I just ran out this morning, I just spoke to the station manager. My boss is going nuts. Very late, I'm just texting my boss. I'm a carer. They want me to be on time. A lack of replacement buses causing aggravation at the city stations. No buses running from here to the city, so you need to uh, probably make other arrangements. This is terrible. I understand the industrial action, but there has to be some option. No buses, nothing. Very poor explanation, that's it. Those who did manage to squeeze their way onto a bus had an uncomfortable time and a very long wait. A bit of a nightmare this morning. Uh, taxis were probably delayed, waited for about 15, 20 minutes to get a taxi, so. And you just come in from Brisbane? Coming from Brisbane, yeah, yeah, Gold Coast, so. Welcome to Sydney. The major roadways into the city quickly became clogged. The T2 and T3 lanes opened up and the police notified not to find motorists. People are just trying to get to work, just trying to get their kids to school. But the biggest headaches were on the buses. Some people heading to the city from Bankstown becoming stranded near Macquarie Park, with buses not taking the same morning route. With the lack of vision, I wasn't able to recognise that I was supposed to uh, get off the M2 stop apparently, so I don't know where I am and how much longer it's going to take me. Late for work and frustrated, the city's workers were unhappy. I understand why they're doing it, but are they going to pay us for our loss of wage today? Plans were ruined. I can't go to uni this morning. So I'm pretty bummed because we just returned from COVID back on campus. Now I can't experience that as a university student. Holidays in doubt. We're travelling overseas well, to Norfolk Island and we're here to catch the train to the airport and, and we get here and find that the trains aren't running. So now we've got to find alternative um, you know, travel arrangements, so which is a bit tricky if you're not from here. Many left with little option but to pull the pin altogether. <laughs> Zara James, Nine News. Chris O'Keefe is with me in the studio. Chris, our city is confused. What has actually gone on here? Well, can you believe this, Peter? Dominic Perrottet went to bed last night being told the trains would be running today, only to wake up with the rest of us this morning to the news the entire network was closed. Ultimately, though, this was not a strike. This is a petty dispute but it's difficult to understand why Sydney Trains pushed the nuclear button and shut down the entire network. The sticking point over the weekend was supposedly an argument over rostering. Not ridiculous pay rise demands, not absurd changes to conditions, rostering. The government tried to tell me today that Sydney Trains claimed if they ran the trains, the safety issues for passengers where old women would be stuck at stations without a reliable timetable. But all it takes is a mild rainstorm for the timetable to be thrown out the window anyway. And don't forget, the network is still running on a reduced timetable thanks to COVID. Now, the public expects trains to run come hell or high water because the inconvenience in our city was completely unacceptable. The truth is, it was easier to fly from Los Angeles to Sydney today than to get from Penrith to Town Hall. It was hardly the advertisement we needed on the day tourists were welcomed back. They've come to the land down under. <laughs> For the first time in two years. <laughs> Jody has cancelled her wedding four times, desperately wanting her best mate from America to be here. Oh, I'm shaky, I'm so... Uh, I was ready to like zoom in or whatever I needed to do if I needed to be there, but I want to be here in person. I'm glad I get to be here in person. Bernie hadn't seen his granddaughter since the outbreak began. Because I miss him so much. 
and I did like it forward to this trip for so long. No number of FaceTimes or Zooms could beat this. It's great to have a home again. Absolutely brilliant. Day one of open slather at our borders and it was still largely our citizens coming home. I call Australia home and I'm so happy to be back. But amongst the navy blue Aussie passports, there were smatterings of foreigners who couldn't wait to hightail it to Sydney. We're going to go up to the Blue Mountains, we're going to go to Hunter Valley. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah, past few years, I haven't been able to see my girlfriend or uh, get to play basketball again. So it's nice to come back. But all the Vegemite, fluffy koalas and drag queens in the Southern Hemisphere can't cover up for the reality of international pandemic politics. We shouldn't uh, overestimate um, the challenge that we have ahead because everyone else will be competing with us. And it will be a hard fight with the uncertainty of sudden border closures and Australia's reputation as a COVID backwater. The issue is just the confidence in travelling. It doesn't help when the US State Department still lists Australia as a level four do not travel thanks to COVID. That's the same level as Ukraine. We hope that the Biden administration will, will now move to, to re-evaluate that, that travel warning that they, they have in place. Regardless, businesses like Tweed Eco Cruises are hoping to start banking some tourism dollars once again. China, Hong Kong, Singapore, my crab catching cruise, that come to a complete stop. That was 70% of our business gone. And it's not been easy for Qantas baggage handlers either. Back on the tools after the airline sacked 2,000 of them and outsourced the work. Airport coffee shops and fast food joints, even cabbies, all happy to see people return. 27 international flights uh, into the into Sydney airport today. And we know that that is the beginning of many, many more. And our city hotels with those postcard views are no longer quarantine prisons. There is, however, more work to be done. It may take a few years to get back to pre-pandemic levels of tourism activity, but today is certainly a really exciting step in the right direction. While we might be open to the world, the world is still wary of us. The 1.3 million Chinese who travel here every year and 1.2 million New Zealanders still won't be anywhere near that level, with the Ardern and Xi governments enforcing quarantine on return. Without restriction-free travel for the Chinese and New Zealanders, our tourism recovery will be long and slow, especially because holidaymakers have now missed the Australian summer. With COVID here to stay and the globe starting to get used to it, maybe now Australia can safely ask the rest of the world, where the bloody hell are you? Chris O'Keefe, Nine News. OK, we're going to breaking news now. Penrith and surrounding areas have been hit by a violent storm in the last little while. More than 19 millimetres of rain has fallen in just over 15 minutes. The area has also been hit hard by hail and winds of up to 91 kilometres an hour. This footage just into the newsroom shows flash flooding with drivers forced to push their cars out of the water. And this is the Nepean shopping centre. The roof has collapsed. New South Wales Fire and Rescue is on the scene. We do not know if there have been any injuries at this stage. OK, for more on the storms, I'm joined by Amber in the studio. Good evening. Good evening to you, Pete. Well, a severe storm warning remains in place as we go to air for northern and western Sydney, as well as the Blue Mountains and Hawkesbury areas for damaging winds, a large hail, and as we've just seen, very heavy rain. At the moment, that storm is moving in a northeasterly direction. Now, storms have already rolled through Katoomba, Bankstown and Penrith, bringing flash flooding and gale force winds. This is a look at the rain tonight. It will be concentrated around the Hunter, Sydney and Wollongong, but tomorrow is looking even wetter and we could see more severe storms with potentially up to 50 millimetres of rain. I'll be back with a full forecast a little later, Pete. OK, Amber, thank you. Natasha Beth Darcy, dubbed the widow of Walker, plotted a pathway to riches, but it led to a 40-year jail sentence for murdering her partner, Matthew Dunbar. The judge today described the way she...